viewers, this is coming to you from the Anglican Cable Network, Nigeria, and the title of this program is The Virtues, but I will be taking you on joy. I will read from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Joy is referred here as the fruit of the Spirit. It's like a package. It didn't say fruit. No fruit. So both joy, peace, long suffering, faithfulness are all embodied in that word fruit. But today we talk more about joy. By the way, what is joy? Joy is that inner gladness, a sort of pleasure that um, erupts from a shallow heart. Joy is sort of an emotion, emotion excited when you were expecting some good to come your way. It's a quality of heart and can affect your whole body. When you see someone who is sad, you know he's sad. When you see someone who is happy, he's happy. But happiness and joy are not really the same. That can say there are two sides of the same coin. Happiness is made when you have an object, maybe you get promotion, you can be happy, but joy is from the inside. So to say, happiness is external, on the circum depends on circumstances. But joy is something that wears out of the heart. For example, Paul was in prison, it was joyful. In Philippians 4, 4, it says, Rejoice! I say unto you, rejoice. I was even asking those after the page to rejoice. How can a man in prison rejoice? Because there's something that moves him into rejoice. It's not happiness. It's much, much more than happiness. Paul's heart was filled with joy, even though he was in prison. Let me read Philippians 4, verse 4. I read, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say to you, rejoice. A man who is in prison, rejoices and asking those outside to rejoice. It means that his imprisonment has not affected his emotion. This is a virtue called joy. Not only about happiness, but about joy now. Let's see the what are the sources of joy? What makes one have joy? We all know that it is Christ. When you have Christ inside of you, you surely that will be joy. When Christ comes to your life, you will have joy, joy that works up into more and more joy. I don't forget the day I gave my life to Christ, the day of the week. I was so filled with joy that I really thought I should, I wanted to die. But I felt that the earth was so sinful. And I was filled with so much joy. I woke up, I was filled with joy, I slept, I was filled with joy. But I was walking on air, really. That type of joy. So the soul of joy is really God. What other things bring joy to us? When you have victory over sin, temptations really come. As long as you are in this world, you must be tempted. But when you are tempted and uh, you overcome that temptation, you overcome sin, you must rejoice. You must rejoice that God has given you the moment to overcome sin. Repentance. When someone sins and then you are touched by the Holy Spirit and you repent, joy comes in. I will read from uh, Psalm 51. Verse 12. It is psalm that when David committed sin against God, 
I was converted by Nita. And he prayed this prayer, which I want us to just read now. He says, verse 12. It has taught to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me to the rest of The moment you commit sin, you see that joy will depart from you. There will be an inner emotion telling you that you have done wrong, that you have grieved the Holy Spirit. And so what you have to do, pray that God should return to you the joy of salvation. In Psalm 16, verse 11, it talks about like how God is the source of joy. But see what 11 says, I will read. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In God's presence, there's always joy. And that is prayer. When you stay in the presence of God in prayer, one hour, two hours, 30 minutes, you see that you are filled with great joy. Why? Because you are in the presence of the Most High God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Imagine the President or the Governor or someone important inviting you to his life. When you are in his presence, you'll be happy. And you will need somebody who is a, who is a great importance. How much more be in the presence of God? The Holy Spirit gives joy. When you are praying, when you are praying in the spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you joy. One other sort of joy is testimony. When you hear people testimonies, how God has helped people. Someone testify how God maybe she was she was burdened for about 14 years and she prayed to God and God answered her prayers. You feel with joy, you feel if God can do this for this woman. God can do it for me also. Testimony is being joy. Not long testimony, but good testimony. Or how somebody overcame sin. Somebody may tell you how he was. He would have to kill him and he said, choose between Christ and death. The person said, I choose Christ. And then yeah, he was saved. He was saved. You'll be happy that God can do that thing like that. When you praise God, praise one thing that brings joy so much. When you praise God, you are filled with so much joy. That's why I like them. I love the revelation because they are full of praises. Uh, maybe just take one or two, but the revelation that talks about praise. How the angels of God and the saints who have gone before us praise God day and night. I'll just take revelation chapter 7, verse 10. I'll see from 9. It says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples and tongues, standing before the tomb and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and the Lamb. Salvation to our God, who seated on the throne unto the Lamb forevermore. Salvation to our God, who seated on the throne unto the Lamb forevermore. Just close to it, uh, verse 12. It says, And all the angels from 11 stood around the throne, and the elders, and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne, and what she was saying, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, and power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen, 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 blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. When I sing these songs in praise of God, I don't feel as if I'm in heaven already. So praise brings also joy to people. But I want to say again, again, that 
the object is of joy is God Himself. God is here because He alone by His Spirit gives joy to people. Again, when you read God from using the Bible, it makes you happy that you have such a great God giving you assurances that He can protect you, He can answer your prayers, that can defend you in times of trouble. When you read this promise, like, let me just say one of them, like Luke chapter 10, verse 1920, say, Behold, I have given you authority to tell upon serpents, upon scorpions, upon all the power of the enemy, and not shall by any means hurt you. It makes me so happy that I can have a God that can give me some authority. Or it says, No weapon, faction against you shall prosper, or that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous hide in the name and are safe. When I go to these promises, I have to oh, wow, I have God that can take care of me. I, I need not fear anybody again. I don't know if you have read Psalm 23 before, which is wonderful. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in gay pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Say, yeah, though no. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are with me. You are not that you are standing comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup of you say, surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. So, Psalms give me the joy I read them. I feel that I'm on top of the world. My dear viewers and listeners, joy is important in the life of a Christian. But without Christ, there's no way you can have joy. When you allow Christ to come into your life and transform your life, I tell you, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. When Christ comes to your life, no matter how bad you are, no matter you step into your life, He will come in with the virtues, and joy is part of the virtues He comes with. He comes with, come come with peace, in long suffering, with patience, and so on, but when the joy of love fills your heart, you can never be seen again. That is why, again, that even though you are in tribulation, you are suffering tribulation, I was even though you must count it happy that you are suffering tribulation, how can you be joyful when you are tribulation? Because Christ is in your life. No matter Christ is in your life, no matter what you are going through, it does, joy does not depend on circumstances. It doesn't depend on what you have, the money you have. It doesn't depend on the people you know. It depends on that inner person that you have Christ living inside you. And this is when you leave this earth, you surely go to heaven to meet him in heaven. Because there, he will receive you. If you know him here, when you go there, he will receive you. May God bless you. Amen.